Let's all stand in worship. We're in your presence, Jesus. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Let this be your prayer. Let this be your prayer. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence, Jesus.
worship him. Worship him. Hallelujah. Praise worship God. him. That's what we're here oh. for. She is sick and tired of being sick. She's tired of being weak. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh. I don't want you just to pray for her. Don't pray for her. Jesus, Jesus. Don't pray for her. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Don't pray for her. Don't pray for Michelle. Jesus, Jesus. Command sickness to leave her. It's not Michelle. It's the sickness that we're praying against. Don't pray for her. Pray against the sickness in Jesus' name and command it to leave in Jesus. Be healed. Place your hands on her abdomen. to flee from you. I charge my healing power to come into you now. Says the Lord of hosts. My God, my God. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him in this house. Somebody praise the Lord. Thank God, Michelle. Thank God. Appetite returning. In the name of Jesus. Lord, no Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy to be praised. In the name of Jesus. Oh, you're worthy. God. No hallelujah. more. Jesus, you're worthy. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's over. You're the name it's over. Above. 
for somebody to help me praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is there anybody Your in this house that will help me praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Is there anybody and here that will help me praise the Lord? Is there anybody that will help me praise the Lord? Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of the Lord.
life to him. The powers of darkness that try to steal his breath, I command to bring it back now in Jesus. In Jesus. We're not asking. We're not asking. We're commanding. Fullness of his lungs to be filled with oxygen, clean, pure oxygen as it should be. In the name Jesus, as it was on this day almost 2,000 years ago, Pentecost. Again, Lord, fill his lungs with the Holy Ghost and fire. Jesus sat upon him with tongues as a fire. In Jesus. <laughs> Sandra, make your way through here. Sandra, come up here. Just simply lay your hands on Jerry's head. Just simply lay your hand on his head. God will do the rest. God is doing the rest. God's doing the rest. Not by mind nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. For I am the Lord your God that heals you. Receive of me. For I have given unto you my word. I have given unto you my healing. Receive of me now, says the Lord of hosts. <laughs> There's a special expectancy here right now. Wherever you are in this altar, all over this congregation, stretch forth thy hand. In faith, believing, he'll set you free. Jesus, I command every power that comes against this vessel of clay take your hands off of her take your hands off Christy oh God in Jesus name this child of the king Father I thank you as we claim this soul, spirit, mind, body, being for you and command every defiling spirit to take its hands off of her now. We're not asking you, we're commanding you. Receive, receive, Christy, receive by faith right now. It's done as you receive by faith. Receive by faith in the name Jesus. Receive by faith in the name Jesus. Christy, I want you.
want you to release everything in your life and everybody of every sin that's ever sinned against you. I'm charging you in the name of Jesus, not what you feel, not what you want to do, but because you charge, charge by faith in the Word of God that you're delivered and there's not anybody or anything that you hold any sin against. For your complete deliverance and forgiveness, it must be. As you loose others, you are loosed. As you forgive others, you are forgiven. And as you loose others, you are completely loosed. You're loosed to the degree that you loose others. I'm not talking about a period of time. I'm talking about right now in the name of Jesus. In the name Jesus. In the name Jesus. Praise God.
praise God. Hallelujah. The life is in the blood. And I command this life in the blood to come forth and to speak to her body, cleansing her blood. I command her blood to be cleansed by the word, by the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the authority of Jesus, in the power of Almighty God. Blood be cleansed and life speak forth that her blood be what you meant it to be when you first put it in her body in Jesus name son of God thank God count it victoriously done in Jesus name thank God in Jesus name hallelujah praise God This is prayer for his friend in Michigan that's been bedridden for two weeks. into this friend in Michigan and command him to take up his bed and walk to come forth from that bed this very hour <laughs> in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost I rebuke that pain I command that pain to leave him and I command his infirmity of the flesh to be annihilated out of his body now to serve you completely and fulfill his mission yes. on this earth. My God, it's done in Jesus' name. Praise God. Thank you for the report that he tells Brother Paul in Jesus' name. Praise God. Somebody praise God for what Jesus just did in Michigan. Hallelujah. Father, touch this uncle with neck pain in the name of Jesus. Deliver him, God. Set him free as he gives himself totally to you. In Jesus, holy name, the Son of God. In the name Jesus, wholeness for your glory. In Jesus, hallelujah. Praise God, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. something that April I asked her to share with you 
right before I preach the word, and I want these to stay in the altar all day if they want to. They won't bother me at all. Just tell them what God showed you. Last night I had a dream, and I was outside, and I looked up, and there is a lady just going up. She had on white, and she was just going up into the clouds. And in my dream, I was like, what is that? What, what is she doing? And then we went into a church service. And there was such an excitement. There was such a stirring among the people. And the Lord just began taking people up, just kind of sporadically. And you would just see groups of people just being raised up and just leaving this place. Jesus, Jesus. And I remember there was such a stirring. I want to emphasize that there was a stirring, such an expectancy among the people that the noise from the sanctuary was so loud because the expectancy was so strong and the people knew that at any moment the Lord was going to come back and split the skies. The expectancy church, the expectancy is what we've got to get back to. That at any moment the Lord can split the skies and we're going to go home to be with Him. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, April. Praise God. Would you you just stand all over this house and give God the glory. Jesus said, in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And on my handmaids and handmaidens, I will pour out my spirit. Jesus is giving dreams and visions. He's pouring out his spirit. This is the day of Pentecost. I proclaim Pentecost. This day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I wonder if we can worship him. What already God's done. What he's done already. Just praise him for what he's already done. God be the glory. God be the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. While I was sitting, waiting for the time to come up to minister, the thought came to me, and I've never had this thought before in my life. What if Satan came forth in this altar area, Satan himself, Lucifer, and he said, you who worship me, be silent. And Jesus stood and said, you who worship me, praise me. Jesus name I pray the Father Son Holy Ghost have your way today God use these wonderful people 
Wake us up, Lord, from our sleepiness. Wake us up from the spirit of Laodicea. Wake us up, God. Jesus, you're coming soon. You're trying to wake us up. Jesus, you're coming soon. You're trying to wake us up. Jesus, you're coming soon. You're trying to wake us up. In the name of Jesus, minister to every person here. I pray every person here experienced the baptism of the Holy Ghost before this hour is over at 12 noon. And I bless you and praise you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, sing this before you're seated. All the glory. Let there be glory and honor and praises. Hallelujah. Glory and honor to Jesus. Glory. Honor. God, we give you glory and honor. Glory and honor to him thank you father thank you father thank you father thank you father I don't ask you to do much but I want to ask you to raise your hands if you can toward heaven and give God the greatest praise and glory and honor that you've got in your soul and spirit and praise him let everything that had bread praise the Lord praise ye the Lord. Praise Him on the cymbals, on the high sounding cymbals. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Thank you, Jesus. 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 I don't know if the camera has swept the congregation in the altar and seen these on their face in the altar. In case you don't see it in your church. In case you don't see it in your church. And I'm pointing at the camera now. Maybe it would do you good to be on your face before God and worship Him and show Him the due reverence and benevolence that He deserves. And He deserves all the praise that we can give Him. Perhaps you need to show Him more reverence than you've ever shown Him before. Perhaps you've never been on your face before God and you need to be. Perhaps you've gotten too haughty and high-minded and said, I don't have to do that. But if you're able to, why wouldn't you want to? I'm going to leave that with you. Hallelujah. Pentecost. There was a sound of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them and they all spake with tongues as the Holy Ghost, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I want you to understand that God's spirit and power of the Holy Ghost is just as real. His power has not diminished at all. And I've got to say this. Tonight, if we don't pray for y'all this morning, tonight we're going to pray for a missionary team that's going back to West Virginia Tuesday. And God is sending them. Praise God for that picture. God bless you. God is sending them to West Virginia to win souls to Him. There are souls that are crying out, almost begging people to come talk to them about Jesus and lead them to Jesus. And I say praise God for it. We are sending them with our blessings in Jesus, the Son of God. You can be seated if you can. If you can't, you just stand. It won't bother me at all. I'm used to people standing. I'm used to people sitting. 
for the next 15 minutes I'm going to preach my heart out to the best of my ability of what God has given me and it's about Pentecost Pentecost is significant in the Old and New Testament as well the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost himself in the creation he brooded over the waters of creation and I want you to understand that the Holy Ghost is no stranger he is not a it he is a person Amen. the Holy Ghost is a person the Holy Ghost is a person He's the one. He's the Spirit of the Father that draws you. If you are not drawn to the Lord, then you may have sealed your fate and you're doomed to hell. If he's not drawing you, there's something wrong. If you're not saved, if you're not saved and the Spirit of the Lord's not drawing you, there's something bad wrong. Amen. Because it takes him drawing you to come to Jesus. Except the Spirit of the Father draw you. You can't be saved. You won't want to be saved. But praise God, the Spirit of the Father drew all of us. It's saved. And there's some here that the Spirit of the, of the Father's drawing that's not saved. And I just want you to understand that God wants every one of us to be not only saved, but he wants us to be sanctified. And that means hagio set apart for holy service. Amen. That word sanctification is almost out of the dictionary, but I want you to understand that sanctification is real today. Amen. Jesus prayed in John 17, 17. That's not in my outline. It's hard to follow me when it's not my outline. I give them up in, in the booth. But John 17, 17 says, 17, 17 of John, Jesus praying to the Father. He said, Father, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And he wasn't talking about the KJV or the NIV or the any other kind of V because they weren't even thought of back then. Amen. People get hung up on versions and say this is God given. Mm, tick a lock. I'm not hung up on a version translation. I'm hung up on Jesus. Amen. I'm hung up on Jesus. And his power to save and sanctify and fill with the Holy Ghost. And I praise God that he's doing it again. In this generation, I could give you the names of the people that prophesied. I still believe in prophecy because Jesus gave the gift to the church and a calling and anointing for people to speak and prophesy as he gives them that Holy Ghost anointed utterance. Amen. Jesus wants his people to have the gifts of the Spirit. Yeah. Amen. And it's more than speaking in tongues. That's part of it. But there's more to it than that. He said, you shall receive power. Acts 2, 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And it said, suddenly, instantly, all of a sudden, suddenly there came a sound from heaven of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. It filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as a spirit gave the utterance. If you didn't get the Holy Ghost the way the Word of God says it, you didn't get the Holy Ghost. You see, you got man's experience. Man, tell people how that it's supposed to be in their words. I'm giving you God's Holy Ghost anointed, God breathed word that He said this is the way they received Him. You see, a lot more people are receiving man's word more than they receive God's word. They say, well, I don't believe you have to speak in tongues to receive the Holy Ghost or take it up with God. Amen. You got to be sanctified to receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. And you got to be willing to be sanctified. 
God sets you apart. He forgives you of your sins when you get saved, when you get sanctified. He cleanses you from a lot, all of your habits that you don't need to have. Anything that harms the body is something that you don't need in your body. Amen. I don't believe that God's pleased with people putting bullets in their body. But yet do people do things that will shorten their life and diminish their life. Amen. You see, if some people preach against preachers, I mean preach against, well, I preach against some preachers. Scalawags. But doctors, I praise God for doctors. And godly doctors on top of that. Praise God for Michael Callahan, Dr. Michael Callahan. He was my eye doctor that worked on my eye, my right eye. And I had a cataract, and my vision was 2100. Tuesday, I had it on, on a Monday. Tuesday, my vision was 2025. And it's getting more and more perfect every day. You say, well, why didn't you just pray and let God heal you? You remember what I told you about that man that God healed his eyes? And I praise God for God healing eyes. That's wonderful. If God heals your eyes, thank God for it, but don't condemn anybody if they're not healed of anything. But this good dear brother didn't have a lot of wisdom. God healed his eyes. He took off his glasses. Didn't have, he had 20-20 vision. Didn't have to wear glasses again. He told everybody, if you had faith in God, God would heal your eyes. You wouldn't have to wear your glasses. Who's somebody in here with glasses? If you had faith in God, God would heal your eyes and you'd take off those glasses. If you had faith in God, you take off those glasses, God would heal those eyes. If you had enough faith in God, God would take, you can take those glasses off and God would heal them. Well... I guess I didn't have enough faith. <laughs> I prayed for a lot of people. A lot of people has been healed and delivered or even raised from the dead. But yet for that, I, I just had difficulty praying and believing. And then he went up to one person and said he made his match. I love this. He said, if you had enough faith in God, you'd take those glasses off and God heal you. And the man said, if you had enough faith in God, you'd take those dentures out and God would grow you some teeth. <laughs> I say amen. amen. Even Jesus took a doctor with him, one of the 12. His name was Luke the physician. Think about it. Lord bless you. So I'm not against doctors. Well, I'm not against good doctors. Let me clarify that. There's some quacks, just like there's some quack preachers. Can't say amen, just nod your head on her. I'll get the message. Jesus said, he told him before Pentecost, he said, I'm going to send you the promise. I'm going to pray to the Father that he'll send you the promise. Send you the promise upon you. But he said, tarry in the city of Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. He said, tarry in Jerusalem. And they did just that. They didn't just tarry in the upper room. They were on a 35-acre plant that they stayed within. 35 acres. And as they were there, they were praising God, singing, glorifying God, praying, and seeking the Lord 10 days. Now, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they had got, now don't mistake this, it was not a car in one accord. You can't get 120 people in an accord. Honda Accord. You can't do it. But they were all in one mind, in one accord. 
and then the promise that Jesus said he would send because he was already back with the Father. He sent them the baptism of the Holy Ghost and they were sitting together. They started out 500 and they dwindled down 380 left. They couldn't stick around for the prayer meeting. As a matter of fact, hold on to this. We're having a church prayer meeting at 530 tonight. And if you're not here, I'm going to miss you. At 530 tonight, we're having a prayer meeting. What time did I say? When? Praise God. You know what time it is and you're going to be here. Lord bless you. And we're going to pray. There are specific needs of the church we've got to pray for tonight. We are going to bind together in unity as one in the name Jesus. I want to proclaim to you the devil's a liar. He tried to do everything he could to disrupt Pentecost. There was naysayers there and they said after the when the day of Pentecost was come and they were hearing it noise abroad they heard the wind not just the people in the upper room but the people in Jerusalem. That was the feast of weeks. The feast of Pentecost Pentecost. They came from all points of the world to come to the Feast of Weeks and celebrate. They were there worshiping God. They were there for a specific purpose. Thousands upon thousands of people was there. And as they were there, they heard the sound of a rushing wind, not just the people in the upper room, because it was like a hurricane blowing in that upper room. And they heard the disciples. They were not in that upper room because they heard them outside the perimeters of the upper room for they heard them speak in their own language to glorify and praising God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to understand they heard them praising and magnifying God in their own dialect, their own tongue, their own language. Amen. Nobody had to tell them them what to say to speak in tongues. Nobody had to tell them to say banana as fast as they could and then they'd get your tongue tangled up. I know what I said. And sound like something that was gibberish, but I want you to understand the Holy Ghost language is not gibberish. The Holy Ghost speaks in a heavenly language. Sometimes he speaks in an earthly language. Sometimes he speaks in tongues of angels. Paul said, though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, if I have not charity, I am nothing but a sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. I am nothing. It's not so important about the tongues as it is the reason you receive the tongues. Yes. You see, this, uh, this thing, it looks like a lizard that comes out of your mouth called a tongue. James says, this is the most unruly member of your body. And if you bring this under subjection and submission, if God conquers your tongue, he's got the rest of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the tongue's the most unruly member of the body. And so the tongue just sometimes wags at both ends. There was somebody, I remember Brother Jeffers when he preached over on 77. He used this illustration. He said, some people's tongue is so long it won't fit on the altar. Of course, we could put two together and some tongues still wouldn't fit on the altar. We could put maybe four across here and it still wouldn't fit on the altar. But I know somebody that can get a hold of the tongue and sanctify it. Sanctify it. He can sanctify the tongue so it's used for God's glory in his service. Yes. Praise God. I would to God that some preacher's tongues were sanctified. I'm so sick of cursing preachers in pulpits and on TV. Yes. 
and they think because they got so big that they can say and do what they want to, I'm here to tell you there's a judgment day coming for preachers that curse in the pulpit and take words out of context and they think it's all right because they're too big and they're not held accountable. I want you to understand they will be held accountable. Amen. Amen. Let me get off that soapbox. After the crucifixion, and this is away from my outline. The Holy Ghost is just leading me a different way. I want you to understand something. After the crucifixion, after the resurrection, when Jesus was resurrected out of the tomb, Bible scholars, I want you to hear this. There were many, I don't know how many, I don't know if all of them were emptied out of paradise or not. I can't say because the Bible doesn't say. But they came forth out of paradise. And he gave gifts unto me. And they were seen on the streets of Jerusalem. It doesn't say how many days, but I'm of the opinion. I can't prove it one way or another. I believe they were on the earth 40 days, as Jesus was. And I believe, I don't think they'd go up before Jesus did. And they went up as Jesus went up. This dream, a vision that April had and told you about. I honestly cannot say how long we will be on the earth after or when the rapture takes place. I know what I've preached all my life. We'll be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, one billionth of a second, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord. But if Jesus' resurrection was a sign of our resurrection time and rapture, then I'm looking at that and it's not a salvation thought, but if Jesus allowed them to stay here 40 days to tell people about him and about his resurrection, praise God, I hope more souls were saved. Amen. And I would love to be changed and still go and tell people about Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know what, I don't know if we're going to just go up. It don't say we'll go up immediately, but it does say we'll be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And I know what the scripture says. I've read it, I can quote it verbatim, just about frontwards, backwards, and upside down about the rapture and the coming of the Lord. The main thing is, you need the power of God, the power of Pentecost, the power of the Holy Ghost in your life, operative and acting, actively engaged in your soul and spirit and body, and allow Him to work in and through you every day of your life. This team going to, to be a missionaries over in West Virginia, y'all need more Holy Ghost than you ever had before Amen. to use you and go before you. And God's already spoke to them and he's already going before them. And I praise God for it, Stephen. And I thank God that the Lord Jesus is raising them up and raising missionaries up out of this, this church. Praise God. I said praise God. To reach the harvest. Jesus spoke. The Holy Ghost spoke. In Scott and Melanie's house. You say, you've told this over and over, and I'm tired of hearing it. Well, just shut your ears. I'm going to tell it again. But in your living room, the Holy Ghost spoke in tongues interpretation. And he says, build me bigger barns. And then he said, bring in the harvest. He said it to Nakalula Church of God. He said it to New Haven Church of God. And he said it to Safe Harbor Church of God. He said, build me bigger barns. And that was when we were across the street over on 77. God told us to build bigger barns. Well, God blessed us with a bigger barn. Why do you think God told us to build bigger barns? Because we don't have room to hold the people that's coming to Jesus. Now let me tell you something. People won't come to Jesus. You're sitting on the pew. You got to get up. I said, you got to get up. 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 
and do something for Jesus. They're not going to just come. People are not going to just come. you got to get up and go out. He commanded them to. Let me tell you what's going to happen if you don't. Persecution's coming your way, church. Persecution has been ordered for those that will not go out and do what the Word of God says. How can you prove that, preacher? I can prove it by the Word. God sent strong persecution to the church in the first century. He told them, he said, to go into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. That's not parts, it's part. To the uttermost part of the earth. And the church wanted to stay in Jerusalem. They wanted to stay in a group. Just us four and no more. You didn't hear me. Just us four and no more. I don't think speakers are working over here. Just us four and no more. I got to make sure y'all got this. Just us four and no more. God wants to multiply you. Oh, help me, Jesus. Lord, should I tell them? I'm going to risk it. We can hold over 600 in this auditorium and balcony. What God showed me twice the size of this building will not hold what God showed me is coming. The harvest we are, we church, are to reach. Not me, but we. Not me, but we. I'm part of we. Not me, but we. I'm here to tell you, the Holy Ghost is sending us out. And if we don't go, strong persecution is coming to this church. Hear me and hear me well. Strong persecution is already ordered for us. You're getting too quiet, church. You're getting too settled in, on your own and you're too, too comfortable. The air conditioning is too good and the, the pews are too padded. You remember what I said? If you got too complacent, I told you and I give you a promise that I'd have sawdust hauled in on this carpet. Till the Holy Ghost fell and people got back where they used to be with God. I'm here to tell you there's no time to be complacent. There's no time to be quiet. There's no time to settle down and say everything's all right. Everything is not all right. If you want strong persecution, you just sit there and do nothing. Don't tell anybody about Jesus. Don't tell them Jesus loves them. Don't go to Walmart and tell people Jesus loves them. Don't go to the grocery store and tell people Jesus loves them. But if you want a Holy Ghost move, and I'm here to tell you and I proclaim it in Jesus' name, we ain't seen anything. Oh, that's not proper English. We haven't seen anything for what God is doing in the now. I don't care who sits and won't say a word and won't praise the Lord and won't worship God. This preacher is going to preach till Jesus comes or until I drop dead in the pulpit praising and preach the word of God gun barrel gospel straight and telling you Jesus is coming. Prepare to meet thy God. Pentecost is the time that they brought in the harvest, the wave offering, the first fruits of the Feast of Weeks. They brought in the harvest, and here it was. They not only brought the harvest in, but church, I want you to see this with me. The Holy Ghost came down. The church went out, and the souls came in. Amen. You can't hear me. You'd say amen. Could I hire you to say amen? If I paid you, would you say amen? Can I pay anybody to say amen? Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm fighting the devil tooth and toenail trying to preach this message and you're just sitting there. Help me. I'm going to tell you, God wants to win this world at him. Jesus is sending us out only after the Holy Ghost comes so fiery in us that you can't keep it quiet. You can't keep him in. You've got to let him go forth. You've got to go on the highways and hedges. You've got to compel them to come in. You've got to win the harvest. People are going to hell every few seconds. We've got to reach the harvest. As we look around us, my heart is so heavy. All the fields are white, ripened unto harvest, and so swiftly comes the night. Christians, we've got to get busy. There is work to do. Here's an urgent task awaiting you. Go out and win. Rescue from sin. Day's almost done. Low sinks the sun. Souls are crying. Men, men are dying. When the lost at any cost. Stand with me, please. You have heard my word. I call you unto myself. I desire for you to be refilled with my spirit and power, says the Lord of hosts. I have a mission for you greater than you are, and it cannot be fulfilled in your own volition. You've got to have my power in you greater than ever before, for I am going to flow in you and through you like a mighty rushing roar of wind, like a mighty, mighty river. I'm going to flow through you and souls will come in to my harvest. Get in this altar as quick as you can, as fast as you can. Get in this altar as fast as you can. Get in this altar as fast as you can. Don't delay. Don't be sluggish. Don't be lay out of sin. Get in this altar as soon as you can. Get in this altar as soon as you can. My Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost giving this altar call. Get in this altar as soon as you can. Hold up. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus. In Jesus, my God. I hear the sound of a rushing body wind <laughs> and it's filling this house again, again, and again. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, I thank you that every young person be baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, every person in this house. Be filled with your power. Be filled with your anointing. Be filled 
with your spirit and power of the Holy Ghost. Be filled, oh God. Be filled with you. In the name of Jesus, be filled with your power and presence. God, be so filled with you, God, that they have to go out and tell the world Jesus saves today and Jesus is coming. 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 Praise God. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming. 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 Hallelujah. Somebody believe me. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming in Jesus' name. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Praise God. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. My blessed God, Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming. Praise God. Jesus is coming. 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 Hallelujah. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. 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 Souls are coming. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. This is who I saw. I saw Abraham. I saw Isaac. There was Jacob. Over there in the, was Paul and Timothy. I had a request for him, but I said, I want to see Jesus. He's the one. and cried holy, 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 praise God, holy, I cried holy, I bowed my head and cried holy, thank you Jesus, holy to the Son of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, the sights I saw it took me down streets of that city. God, all the many beautiful sights. He took me from mansion to mansion. All the sights I saw. Oh, I just want to see him. I said, I want to see Jesus. He Just 
see him. Can't you just see him? Holy, I cried, holy, I clapped my hands and said, holy, praise God, holy to the Son of God. I bowed on my knees and cried, holy, holy God. Holy, 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 holy God. I clapped my hands and sang glory, glory to the Son of God. Praise God. We're soon going. But before we leave this earth, we've got such a phenomenal mission. We've got such a phenomenal mission. Nobody can do your part but you. You're the only one that can fulfill your mission. I can't fulfill your mission. You can't fulfill mine. You're that person beside you. You've got to fulfill your mission yourself. And I know you want to very soon the trump of God will sound the voice of the archangel we'll go up with Jesus we'll be changed we'll go up with Jesus to be with him forever yes Jesus is saving this young boy wants to be saved and accept Jesus as personal savior God's son. Okay. Just ask Jesus to forgive you. Say, God, just repeat after me. I'll pray with you. God, can you say, God? I believe Jesus is the son of God. And Jesus died for me. That I can be saved. So I can be saved. I repent. I repent. Of all my sins. Of all my sins. And I believe. I believe. You've forgiven me. You've forgiven me. And I receive. I receive. Jesus. Jesus. As my Savior. As my Savior. And I accept. And I accept. You, Jesus. As my Lord, by the Word of God, by faith, I accept that I'm saved in Jesus' name. Thank God. Just praise Him, Son, for what Jesus just did for you. Praise God for it. And receive Jesus. That's how we're saved. Just the way you just prayed. That's what you do to be saved. Do you believe Jesus forgive you of your sins? Praise God. Just thank Him for saving you. Thank you for saving me. Jesus said, Permit little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Praise God. His name is Caleb. Praise God. Would you welcome Caleb into the family of God in heaven? Praise God. We love you, Caleb. So proud of you. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to pray for Caleb, and he'll have somebody talking to him more about Jesus and explaining the way more perfectly.